Smartphone biometrics have flaws, Wyden wants tech companies to mind their own business, and NordVPN had a data breach. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for October 22nd, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire. It is because of the generosity of people that watch this show that I am able to make it every week. So thank you. And now on to the news. Two notable brands in smartphone manufacturing have had biometric fails this past week, Samsung and Google. First, Samsung released a statement Thursday saying that they will be fixing a vulnerability in their S10 and Note 10 phones that would allow for anyone to unlock the phone with a fingerprint scan. Lisa Nielsen discovered the flaw after purchasing and applying a screen protector to her Samsung phone. She discovered that while only one thumb was paired for biometrically unlocking her phone, both of her thumbs actually worked to unlock the phone. She also discovered that her husband and her sister could also unlock unlock the device. It only seemed to happen with certain gel screen protectors. Samsung first advised that customers used Samsung authorized accessories and told the user that they were internally investigating the flaw. Days later, Samsung stated that they'd patch the vulnerability. The fingerprint sensor in Samsung's new line of phones uses ultrasound in display sensor technology, which detects the ridges of fingerprints. Gel protectors include patterns that are recognized as fingerprints, so if a fingerprint is paired in the settings while the gel protector is installed, any finger could be read as being a match. This would only work on devices with the gel screen protectors installed, so tempered glass protectors are safe to use, though Samsung has stated that even these have issues with reliability. The patch release date is not published at this time, and Samsung now recommends users use alternative means to secure their devices until the fingerprint sensor is actually updated, as well as removing the cover and deleting all previous fingerprints and then registering them again. The second issue affects Google's Pixel 4 and 4 XL smartphones, of which I have in hand and I have tested this vulnerability. Let me show you how this works. On, unlocked. It's so very simple. So, disclaimer, Google sent me this device as a gift via Team Pixel. The new Pixel line killed off the fingerprint sensor altogether, and they replaced it with a face unlock mechanism that is super fast and responsive, as you can tell, but it also comes with some caveats. Upon setting up face unlock, users are prompted with several warnings, including the potential for a twin to unlock the phone, but also this glaring issue. Face unlock will work with your eyes closed. This means that the phone could be unlocked locked by a snooping individual while you are asleep or unconscious. While the phone does not actually go on sale until October 24th, reviewers have spoken up about this issue. The Verge leaked a photo of a settings page on the Pixel 4 that included the option to require eyes to be open when using face unlock, but that is currently not available in the release product. I should mention that Apple's Face ID does require you to be alert for the iPhone to be unlocked, but a Dutch nonprofit found that just like Last year, 42 out of 110 smartphones tested had facial recognition flaws. Google responded to the issue saying that users should require a PIN, password, or a pattern for unlock instead of relying on the face unlock feature while they work on an option to unlock the phone only while eyes are open. That's also available via the lockdown option that can be toggled when long pressing on the power button. That update may not come for a few months, according to reports. So by removing the fingerprint sensor entirely from this phone, Google is putting all of its authentication eggs into the face unlock basket. So hopefully that update will come sooner rather than later. Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat for Oregon, just introduced a bill aimed at data privacy in regards to big tech platforms like Facebook. He calls the bill, and I am not joking about this, it is called the Mind Your Own Business Act, and it would make tech companies face harsh penalties if they fail to meet his security and privacy standards. The bill, if approved, would give the Federal Trade Commission more authority to establish a minimum for cybersecurity standards for tech companies. It would also be authorized to 
fine 4% of a company's annual revenue for a first-time offense. Now, it's obvious that this bill is aimed at Facebook, who has been fined minimally in the past for privacy issues, and it was inspired by the fees within GDPR. Empowering the FTC with these new rules would allow the commission to enact first-time privacy violation fees and give a direct hit to senior executives because it would also make it a crime for them to knowingly lie to an agency about security and privacy. State attorneys general would and could enforce the regulations as well. If a senior executive was found lying, they could face up to 20 years in prison. Now, Wyden wants to enact federal do not track requirements, so this bill would allow consumers to opt out of data tracking, and he also wants to make privacy first versions of platforms a requirement as well. The Mind Your Own Business Act would also force tech companies to give consumers a way to review the personal information stored about them, whom it's been shared or sold to, and the ability to challenge inaccuracies. Wyden included clauses that would require companies to assess algorithms used to process consumer data to determine information such as biases and discrimination, extend protections for low-income individuals so privacy isn't deemed as a luxury product, and levy tax penalties on CEOs. Now, will it be passed into law with all of the bill intact? Probably not, but this is the strictest one that we have seen advocating for consumer privacy and security. Even a watered-down version of this would be a good start, but it would still require a passing vote. Wyden's bill is one of many being introduced on the floor this year, and hopefully one of them will be passed. We can hope, right? Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I am putting together the annual physical rewards for this year, which is so exciting. So keep an eye on the updates on the Patreon page. Also, I wanna start a security and privacy audio podcast as a part of the ThreatWire feed. That is my next Patreon goal. So if you wanna help, check out the community. Now's a great time to do it. The link is in the description below. When you sign up, you will automatically get a physical reward after your first year of membership and every year thereafter. Also, a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their adorable fur baby photos. There's new ones this week. I love them. Keep them coming. NordVPN, a popular consumer VPN product, confirmed that they experienced a data breach back in March of 2018. According to their press release, an attacker had accessed one of the data servers they had been renting in Finland without authorization, gaining access to it by exploiting an insecure remote management system, which the data center provider had left. NordVPN states that they were not aware that this system even existed. The VPN provider said the server did not contain users activity logs, nor usernames or passwords, which are not sent to the data server in the first place. The data leaked was a configuration file, which ceased to exist as of March 5, 2018. Security researchers had found this data online and contacted NordVPN. Now, NordVPN stated that they are moving all servers to RAM to be completed next year and launched an internal audit into their infrastructure. They explained that they first found out about the vulnerability a few months back, but they could not publicly disclose it because they had to do an internal infrastructure audit first to ensure that no other data could be prone to similar misuse. The server that was exploited was originally built on January 31st, 2018 and added to the NordVPN server list. The data center noticed the vulnerability and deleted the account on March 20th, 2018. They did not disclose this to NordVPN. NordVPN ceased their contract with the server provider and shredded the server once the leak was disclosed. Now, NordVPN also disclosed that an expired TLS key was stolen, but it could not be used to decrypt VPN traffic of other servers. This could, though, allow an attacker to set up a server that imitated NordVPN. Now, of note is the fact that NordVPN is now working on creating a bug bounty program, and they will be launching an independent external audit. Now, before I leave, I would like to say thank you so much to Robert Wayne Jerby, Fati Catatonic Prime, Jason Adrian Raymond, Mark Major Lee, Emery Lee, Peter Greg Deviant Alum, Justin Christopher, and Hania Koi, hopefully I said your name right, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much to everyone. Y'all are amazing. I appreciate you. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.